Welcome back to another episode of TKO. Yo, Trey here. Drop it. There we go. I forgot to do the uh, explosion last time. Oh, that's cool. When I was editing, and then by the time I'd already exported it, I was like, I'm not I'm too gonna. tired. Yeah, yeah. push it out. Yeah, that's I was cool. having computer issues that day. Um, so we are carrying on with all things technical knockout, um, and today uh, we decided to just go with cybersecurity. Yeah. and why it's important and we're also going to try to start doing these once a week every week and we're just going to find subjects to talk about uh, i just kind of scoured the web last night looking for new updates for av security it security and found some really good bullet points and mm -hmm. the, that kind of led me down a rabbit hole of researching other stuff that you don't really think about every day um that's we all kind of take for granted mm -hmm. you know what i mean like how many people out there are watching this and their password is like your first name, your dog's name, and the year of your birthday. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this from my perspective, man. Like, the internet scares me. There's it, a lot out it there. It just scares me. And the whole cybersecurity thing is like something that I know is there, but I don't really know what it is. But for some reason in my mind, I think people that are doing cybersecurity are like doing minority report type stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Like, way, like, I can't comp like I don't understand what it is, so I'm actually pretty uh, intrigued by this because I'm going to learn some stuff about uh, cybersecurity, and I'm also probably going to get really paranoid because I don't have well, look, if, really any cybersecurity. If you're paranoid now, know this: you know people always talk about the dark web. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a dark web and there's a deep web. Your information is already on the deep web. Everyone's information is on the deep web. Okay. The deep web is basically everything that's you don't see by going with a web browser. Web pages, it's just data in a cloud. That's the deep web. Like your credit card, all your mortgage information, your birth date, everything is on the deep web. It's stored up there because it's in a database somewhere. The dark web is basically sites hosted underneath. It's like in between what we see, like on you know Google.com yeah. and the deep web. Yeah. But the, they call it the dark web because a you have to know how to access it uh -huh. with an onion router. Yeah, we're not even gonna get into that today. With an onion router, and then it connects via nodes, so the server you're connecting to doesn't know where you are, and you don't know where the server is. Is this like a VLAN? No, it's way shadier. Well, VLANs aren't shady. It's the shadiest <laughs> VLAN you could possibly create. Okay. So basically, it'd be like if I wanted to sell you something. Say I was gonna sell you that microphone. Uh huh. But I didn't know your real name. You didn't know my real name. And we did escrow through three friends. And those three friends didn't know where each other was. And they just like left a drop somewhere in the middle of town where no one really knew what it was. And just by happenstance, money that's was exchanged. The dark web. Yeah. So the dark, they call it the dark web because that's where things are illegally sold. So everyone so, confuses the deep web and the dark web. Deep web is, it's going to be here forever. Got to get used to it. Dark web is where shadiness happens so my understanding of or what i've understood or what has been i guess somewhat divulged to me or the way i understand it is the internet the internet that i know is really only about 10 percent of yeah probably less than there. that right so like when you're using these web browsers when you're using internet explorer if you're using safari or i guess is internet explorer that's a web browser right uh it's still around, yeah, technically. I think okay. it's a show, new I'm, 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 I'm showing my age here. But no, you would have showed your age if you were like, just hop on Netscape. AOL. Now, AOL's still around. People still have AOL email addresses. So there you go, guys. Looking um, at you, at AOL people. I, I, uh, I was under the, the impression that the internet that I do my interneting on is really like only 10%. And then I guess I, the deep web is kind of like the 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 data pools of yeah. like where stuff lives yeah. you have a uh, video doorbell right yeah deep web okay you know what i mean that's not accessible yeah but it's a, on the it's connected it's, yeah it's on it's connected it's, it's connected, connected device um and then the dark web i guess is where you can like buy credit card numbers buy credit card numbers and like other nefarious bad stuff yeah Bad, yeah. bad stuff. Yeah. So we're not going to teach people how to get in the dark web. But where we're going with this is with 
with everything that's happened over the past year and a half, mm-hmm. everything is more connected. Oh yeah. You're at home, you're connected. Yep. You're at work, you're connected. If you're working from home, you have to connect remotely to work. I, I mean, honestly, as you said, kind of with my doorbell, I, like I got my video doorbell mm-hmm. during the lockdown because I had time to go put it in. Mm-hmm. So I would say, if anything, I got more connected yeah. with just peripherals uh, in, you know, in my home and with my kids and with my wife and all that. Like I think, exactly. I think we're probably more connected now through the pandemic than we were before. And that's, that's exactly where I'm going with this. So that's a, that's a okay. great point. So we're all more connected. Mm-hmm. We have a lot more devices to keep track of. Uh, some people have two or three computers, you know, they'll have one or two at the house and they'll have to remote in, uh, to a third. And I'm sure a lot of you guys and gals saw the zoom bombing, you know, it was like the, did you see that? Was Is that like where the, uh, random like, people were hopping on zoom calls. Yeah. That happened to us. Yeah, it did. That happened to us early yeah. on. But then also didn't zoom have something happen where they like leaked information recently. Ah, I'm sure like there's been so many cryptocurrency hacks. Um, just last week, a, a computer hardware and server manufacturer called gigabyte was hacked. And, um, you know, uh, looking from, like surface level down. Yeah. Mm. It's not good. A company got hacked. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of IP that could get leaked, but more importantly, since they make, um, server hardware, Mm -hmm. they have first advanced access to next gen hardware. That's not out and it's all confidential information. Oh, so people got like that. They got like AMD Intel. They're like, pipeline architecture that's like years away that this company had that was confidential was it like ransom like did they hold them oh yeah 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 they're ransomware um so dark web um so while we're all connected i'm stepped on a light um zoom bombing happened um I'm sh- every even us as a company, we implemented different security protocols, changing passwords every sixty days, using two factor authentication, mm-hmm. RSA keys. Um, all these things are important, and you cannot take them for granted. Um, basically, that just goes into why are people hiring so many cybersecurity personnel? If you look on Indeed or LinkedIn or anywhere, some of the most un internet savvy companies mm-hmm. are hiring cybersecurity people. Mm-hmm. Um, I just saw some listings for like a bookstore in here in Nashville. It's hiring cybersecurity. Really? Cause they do online sales and they've been hacked. You know, something else. Uh, okay. This, I know of a couple of people that, uh, last year when the lockdown happened, they lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. And so they just used that time to go back to school. And a lot of them started studying cybersecurity and yep. like, coding and hacking i guess i guess do you study hacking is that like a thing you study e- ethical hacking yeah okay yeah so um we'll get the ethical hacking here in a bit because it's a real thing and there's a really awesome youtube channel um called network chuck who discusses ethical hacking um he actually gave away a free ccna course it's on his channel mm. right now you can it's like you know a, like a 12-part oh, yeah, series you told me about this i told guy. you about this guy yeah. So if he's you are a good teacher, I'll he's a great that. teacher. Southern dude loves coffee. Yeah. Shout out network Chuck. Um, so why has this become at the forefront, um, of where we are today? Mm-hmm. So we just discussed, we're all connected. Yep. We all had a lot of downtime. Yep. People got bored during that downtime and they found out ways to make money if they lost their job, Mm -hmm. be a way of hacking tools and they are widely accessible hacking to, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out how to install Linux on a virtual machine and get some password cracks. So this is all like, I could show you how to do it in less than 10 minutes. It is very simple to do. Yes. You, I promise. Nah, bro. Dude, it's, it is, it's, it's it's, when I started researching it, Uh I was able, don't do this. I was able to install omitting this information from today's episode because this is dangerous info. So don't hack people and be cool. But if you want to know more, just Google Kali Linux. Really? So if somebody really wants to get into your stuff, they're going to find a way. It doesn't take long. 
I'm God, not going to put links is, to any of that down that is in the bottom. Very so unsettling. They are hacking tools are extremely easy to get. Um, here's a little nugget. Between 2016 and 2026, cybersecurity jobs are anticipated to grow by nearly 28%, wow. which is twice as fast as any other computer-related occupation. So far this year, the field has grown 3.5 times quicker than other IT jobs, and that's IT globally. Yeah. Um, so much so that 42% of organizations that are not network-based mm-hmm. are now hiring cybersecurity engineers. And what are they doing? A majority of what they're doing is pen testing. That's what you were kind of getting to a little bit. Yeah. So, so pen testing is you basically, if we were a company, ABC company, mm-hmm. we wanted to hire someone to hack us once a month and find our loopholes and mm-hmm. vulnerabilities mm-hmm. and then fix them. So that's a real job. So that's so, how ethical hacking comes into play. So ethical hackers essentially just kind of uh, attack your infrastructure. Yep. They don't cause damage, but they attack it. They find the vulnerability, and then they say, hey, you have a weakness here. You need to build this up this way, and mm-hmm. it will prevent future – future uh, Intrusions. Intrusions. That's the word I'm looking for. That's a very hackery word. Yeah, that's interesting. That's cool. Uh, but what happens when people don't do that nicely? What happens when they're mean about it? So if you were to get hacked – Mm-hmm. for you know sack for a better term um and people are able to access your your main administrative systems mm-hmm. there are ways to where you can just get in as a normal user mm-hmm. then there's ways you can get in as a super user which is kind of an administrator mm-hmm. and there are no hacking tools that bypass super user and get to what's called the root mm-hmm. which is like god mode or you can just do whatever you want to do. You can literally just delete the whole thing. So you can hold someone for ransom. You could get their personal information. You can get their access. Con- like if you work in a building that has access control, yeah. you can get all that credentials and spoof the cards. Yeah. Like this is real stuff. And we're, we're, like, I'm not doing this to scare you, but I've been doing research on it. And the more you dive into it, the more it's kind of hidden from the everyday stuff because mm-hmm. you don't want everyday people to freak out and go into like total lockdown. Yeah, mode. of course. Um, but this is, this is real. It's becoming more and more of a pressing issue, I would say. Yeah. Right. So when people are hacking these entities, are they, are they doing kind of like in uh, office space where they're taking like a half of a penny or whatever and oh, they're yeah. funding themselves? That was funny. How much money did he have in that bank account? Like 300 something thousand dollars? I can't remember, man, but he was rich. Like, I forgot to round the decimal point. <laughs> it worked in Superman three. But, but it, does that make sense? Like, is it, is it? Are they hacking to just like skim a little bit of money? Are they hacking to get like, I guess in this scenario that you gave where they hack this uh, hardware company, like they're getting pipeline builds on hardware so they can probably figure out how to keep their business afloat. That's a lot of confidential Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I I get that, like trade secrets and stuff. So, But, But are they... Are people hacking people as individuals to steal from the single individual? Or to me, it seems like they're kind of going after businesses more than they're going after the individuals. Yeah, they're going after businesses a lot with ransomware attacks because they know chances are if you hack a multi-billion dollar business, they can afford to lose 100 million bucks in cryptocurrency, Mm -hmm. which a lot of them don't pay because they've got backups and then they'll just modify the code. Okay. You know what I mean? But you still have to build up from ground zero. Mm -hmm. There's been a few people that paid... um, I know there was one that trucking company not too long ago paid because they were hacked. They got administrative access and got all the data from the GPS of the trucks mm. and just wiped the entire system. So they didn't know where the trucks were. Oh, caused a massive. So you know, we're talking about supply chain in our previous two episodes. So that really disrupted the supply chain. Yeah. Anyway, the trucking company ended up paying. I don't remember the ransom, but the Department of Defense got that money back. Okay. Because as much as people think Bitcoin is not traceable, not traceable, there's a level of like anonymity with uh-huh. it. You can figure out where it's going pretty quick. Really? Yeah. <sighs> okay, we got to talk about that some other time. Because yeah, we'll do. We need to do a whole episode on that. Do we know any crypto experts? I mean, I know several so like self-proclaimed experts, but I don't know if I would say that. Can we? Dirty. Can we just bring a crypto expert in here and put a microphone on and put like a black bag over their head? So no one knows their identity. I'll even do like the, the investigative reports. Like, yeah. I think what would be cool is if we had like a mystery science three thousand, and like they just sat right here with their back. Oh yeah, towards the camera. 
That would be cool. Maybe we put like a little black box around them or something. Yeah, we got to figure out some people to do that. But I just don't honestly know. I personally don't know of a cryptocurrency or, uh, expert that's like a legit expert. Yeah, I know people that dabble in it. Yeah, I know people that dabble in it. Yeah, um, I mean, I've got some. I know you've got some. I got some, some you know. i got friends that got some. i got a little bit of FOMO, too, so that's why I got in the mix. But Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't remember where we are going with. Okay, so you asked about are they hacking individuals versus businesses. Yeah. Businesses often have more money to compensate for mm-hmm. the hack. If they're hacking an individual, it's more than likely they don't care about what's on your computer. They care about well, let me back your up. identity. Maybe they care about accessing information about your person to either steal your identity, access your bank accounts, credit card accounts, money market accounts, because I guarantee a lot of people out there just have their passwords for their bank just saved in their browser. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, okay. I, I used to too. So, so you don't anymore. No, man, that gummit. I keep everything. It's so. just easy. Yeah, I, I know it's easy. I, I keep guess that's why I gotta look at this stuff differently. Yeah, I keep everything on a password manager now. Um, I use LastPass; um, they're great. Um, but so, say for instance, um, if you had, do you have Slack on your computer or TeamViewer mm-hmm. or Zoom mm-hmm. or anything like that? I have all those. Yeah. Okay. So, like, um, if somebody really wanted to target you, they could activate TeamViewer without me even um, being there. Yeah, and then just open up Safari and click on your bank, and then like they'd be no. logged in. Yeah, yeah. So that that's happened. Um, so but to, you know, Team Viewers patched a lot of that stuff. Uh, I don't think it happened so much with Zoom. Um, there was one recently that happened with um, something remote desktop. It was either I don't remember which one it was, but it isn't. But it can happen. Yeah. So saving saving your passwords using obscure passwords with a password manager is the best way to do it. Um, but chances are they're not they're not going to go hack you to steal you know forty five hundred dollars from a checking account. Yeah, they're there to get information that's critical to you. Yeah, um, open up a loan in your name. Got it. Get all that money. Got it. Got it. Okay. So rolling back to you know companies hiring these pen testers, um, here's a little list of kind of what they're responsible for, uh, and these are good paying jobs, mm-hmm. and not everybody out there can do this and do it well. But, you know, some of some of what you're responsible for are digital forensics, meaning if the network was hacked, can you sniff out the path they chose to get there and how they got in and block it in the future? Oh, OK. Yeah. So you're basically a detective at that point. Yeah. Um, we talked about cyber risk and strategic analysis. So mm-hmm. that's pen testing, network and system engineering. Um, I, I personally think this bullet point is going to be the biggest sector of growth other than security moving forward Okay. because not just computers and tech are on the network now. It's everything. Everything. Yeah, man. I know everything we do in the AV realm has a network jack on mm-hmm. it. Um, whether that's microphones. Now we, now like in the next two years, we might not need hardware mm-hmm. for audio processing. Mm-hmm. I know there's vendors we work with that have software now uh, that run on a black box. Mm -hmm. That doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. You run on a virtual machine. Yeah. You know, in the cloud. Yeah. And then remotely control anything you need. So everything's on there. So the network engineering and system engineering side of this is going to be a huge play as the networks need to get larger. Um, And the system engineering side of that. Um, when it, when it relates to like managing cyber events, um, I was just telling Trey this last week. I don't know if they came in or not, but there's in like a week they show up. Yeah. So like, you know, you've all been to a corporate office and you see little network jacks on the wall and you can just plug your computer in and go to town. Well, there's a device that these people make that you can just, I think it's, what is it called? A land turtle shark jack, shark, jack, shark jack. I think, let me see here. You just plug this sucker up into an open network port. And it's color coded, and within about ten minutes, maybe less than ten minutes, actually, there's a whole video on this thing. But it dumps a Shark log Jack. file. Yeah, yeah. Shark Jack. It dumps a log file of everything and anything that's connected to this network. Um, Which is real scary that it's just this little plastic. Yeah, it's a, like a thumb drive it's with like a network. A thumb jack. drive. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, hacking tools are widely available. Where do you get that's that? That's like one? some James Bond stuff, dude. If Where'd you, you think about did you get it. that on Amazon? Got it on Amazon, dude. Yeah. Okay. 
You can buy <laughs> l- legitimate hacking tools on Amazon. Yeah. So welcome to 2021. I don't. I don't even know why I got them. I just felt like I needed to get it because. Yeah, I mean, I it's, have FOMO. Yeah, I mean, like we can play around with it, you know, here on TKO if you want, and we'll yeah, plug I mean, it in. Yeah. And then we can look at a dump file, and you can see everything that you ever wanted to see about a network without having to like plug a computer into it once. So there's there's zero trace of James Bond's MacBook Pro being attached to this network. Wow. But you man. have all the information. So there's there. So let's talk about some different steps yeah. we can take to move forward. So planning security. Question. Yes. Is this what you're about to go over? Is this best practices for me as an individual or is this best practices for uh, businesses and institutions? Yes. Okay. Cool. I would say both. Um, this, like, after going through this, like, I completely redid mine and mm. my wife's, like, stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just too easy, especially after, like, getting the stuff mm. and then doing it myself. And, like, I'm not a cybersecurity professional as I was able to do it. Yeah. There's probably, like, a 15-year-old kid somewhere out there just, like, yeah, man, I remember. I, I kind of remember when this stuff was really starting to become a thing, and you kind of were mentioning stuff to me, and I, was, I got paralysis by analysis because this is so foreign to me. You yeah, know? and you're like, "Oh, it's not hard," and I'm thinking, "No, dude, I can't. I don't know how to write code." You don't have to write, code. and that's, that's the code's written. That's what I'm saying. That's what's <laughs> that's what's so weird about the it. code is written, and you just have to go click, and you hit one keystroke, and you got all the information. Jeez, so. Let's talk about steps yeah. you can do as an individual yeah, or a company please. to mitigate this. If you're a company, hire someone that does IT or cybersecurity now. Like, find someone. Uh, find someone. Yeah. Hire someone that it might not be their main job, but someone that knows enough to dabble in it, and then maybe like you know encourage them to take the online courses and do it. You're gonna need it yesterday is this like a full-time job or is this something that like you could maybe hire a consultant that does this for like a couple different businesses yeah no you can absolutely do that so you can hire people as a consultant um i think the guy was talking about earlier i'm not sure but i think he might do it for multiple businesses Mm -hmm. he's like a consultant type yeah um a lot of people do it and they work remote Mm -hmm. and they do it for several different companies Mm -hmm. like a fractional to me i'm thinking of like a fractional CFO, I think is what they call it, where it's like, yeah, you're the accountant bookkeeper for seven or eight different businesses. Sure. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, cybersecurity and pen testing for that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, just think it like, you know, Apple. Mm-hmm. So they have a bounty program. Yeah. I've heard of this. To where they encourage people to ethically hack iOS, iPad, Mac OS, yep. the hardware level firmware yeah and if they if you discover a vulnerability that they haven't find found and you are able to help them patch it they pay a lot of money wow so you have to you have to discover the vulnerability and then provide them the fix uh essentially i'm not sure you have to provide them with the fix i'm not sure i'll have to do more research but i think you know they they got a program. They the yeah, point. they have a program. I'm I think they'd like to um have you help them, I mm-hmm. would say. Sure. I mean if they're paying less they're gonna look, pay you for it. How much did Apple pay out in bounty twenty twenty? Let's see. Apple security bounty, eligibility, bounty categories. Look at this, dude. If you find a problem with iCloud, hundred grand. If you are able to get data extraction from an iOS device, quarter of a million dollars. So if you're able Bro. to hack and so if you're able to hack this is on this is on developer.apple.com forward slash security dash bounty. I'll put this in the links below, but if you're able to access a device and attack it. Okay, let's let's back up one sec. If you're able to get to an iPhone and just l- bypass the lock screen, hundred grand. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. If you are able to, I mean, get how a, long does it take to do stuff like this? Oh, a long time. Okay, I didn't you know? know if this was like you just get a couple different like 
you know, software applications and you just get them linked up a certain way and it just starts. Nah, you know, I think Apple's pretty good about security, but. I think I see a, do I see a seven? That's a milli right there. Do I see a million dollars? If you are able to do a zero click kernel code execution with persistence and kernel PAC bypass. The freak does that mean? No idea. It must be bad. It's a million bucks. If you want a million dollars, that's how you'll get a million dollars. Yeah, let's we'll see. Uh, they require a detailed description, uh, steps to reproduce, maximizing your payout. If you can affect multiple flat platforms, um, impact sensitive components. Uh, it Dang. doesn't say you need to fix it. So you just got to like show them that it's there, prove that you show them that it's there, and then give them a freaking routing number i guess yeah i mean all the way down to like if you can somehow get into someone's icloud unauthorized they'll just give you twenty five thousand dollars if if you can reproduce the steps and to show them how to do it dang man um so evidently this is a very lucrative uh i mean there are firms out there whose job it is just to pen test apple and they collect these bounties and they pay them they got money a lot of it they definitely got a lot of money a lot of it um so to answer your question, it doesn't need to be a full-time staff member mm-hmm. if you're a smaller business. You know, I'd say if you have 30 employees or more, I'd probably say hire a full-time person because mm-hmm. chances are you're managing, if everyone has a phone and a computer, 60 devices yeah. off the rip. Yeah, It's a lot. I know our guy, Chris, deals with like probably 70 devices. Yeah, between computers and phones and iPads and... Hotspots and... Hotspots and all that jazz. Yeah, all wow. and and all the demo gear. Because all of our demo gear has a network jack. Yeah. So it can get... Shout out, Chris. Thank you for being here. And Ed. Yeah, and Cap. Thank you, guys. Um. So how to plan for this. Mm-hmm. So I think we've said in the last two episodes... If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So plan your security wisely. Mm -hmm. Use things like two-factor authentication. I think everyone, like I know my dad, when he would come home from work, he had a little digital key that rolled numbers, Mm -hmm. and he had to use that. So we have new digital ways of doing that, either with Google Authenticator. uh, The new iOS 15 will have a um, built-in two-factor authentication code generator. Oh, wow. So you can use that. So plan that. You know, there's a bunch of different steps you can use. Don't reuse passwords. Don't use passwords along with the same, you know, uh, same password across multiple yeah. things. The one that I've used for 25 plus years. Stop doing that. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, I've got a different password for every single like, you know, if it's something like where if I had to like log on to like a forum to discuss like the sony upgraded the firmware on my tv and now it stopped working with the remote Mm -hmm. well i had to create a login for that so like obviously my password's like you know van halen 1985 (laughs) rocking or whatever you know like yeah it's just whatever but if it's something critical yeah banking banking financial identity any of that stuff lock that up hotels.com oh wow yeah i didn't think about that you can go book a hotel yeah it's got your card saved yeah wow you can just go book a hotel room in your name. Just like, you know, just think yeah, cognizantly yeah. of what's stored, where it's stored, and how it's stored, and what can affect you. Yeah. Um, number two on this list is securing the infrastructure. So whether that is, this is kind of compounding on network security, but like, you know, even uh, Wi-Fi, for instance. I can't tell you how many sports bar type restaurants we've been in around the Southeast that when you look for Wi-Fi networks, you either see all their consumer grade televisions they purchased mm-hmm. from Walmart or Best Buy show up as hotspot access points you can connect to and put whatever you want on the TV. Yeah. I've done that a couple of times um, with Vizio in particular. Yeah. So, I mean, what's to stop somebody from just rolling up in there and putting something on that TV that you don't want anyone to see. Right. So plan the infrastructure of the security. Start with that. Uh, going back to the sports bar thing, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, you know, Wi-Fi access points come up, and then I'll also see, like, their AV control access point come up that's unsecured. Yeah. 
And like they'll and it's just, not even hidden either. That's the thing. It's not hidden because they either forgot to hide it or they have to leave it unhidden for devices to see it. Mm-hmm. They have to leave it unsecured or, for the. Or probably if they're in like my situation, like the general manager of that restaurant forgot the name of their actual network. Yeah, or something. exactly. So it, well, you know, and, and they'll they'll name it something like you know um, TV control or uh-huh. audio control, and with a couple quick steps, you can connect to that access point, yeah. figure out what type of control system it is. Chances are there's an iPhone app, there's an iPad app yeah. or a computer app. And those passwords are not, they're like, they're not hard to crack. Yeah. They're not hard to get around. Right. So there's a restaurant. I'll leave it unnamed. It's in our local town. They have pizza and beer. They have an unsecured access point. I could go in there and turn off lights. Any light I wanted to just like that with a snap of my phone. So, <laughs> Like we're in the industry, so I knew what to do. But like, that's crazy. I could have I could have turned off the whole restaurant, and they wouldn't have like they would have just walked. They wouldn't back have known who did. They would have walked to the touch panel and been like boop, and turned it back on, and I would have turned it back off. I could have deleted the code if I wanted to. So secure the infrastructure, whether it's home or business. Have secure Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. You know, hiding the network. I've had plenty of friends that would just hide the network with no code. Mm-hmm. You can find hidden networks. Mm-hmm. Didn't know if anyone knew that or not, but you can literally just. You don't even have to download a tool. You just like if you have Apple, you just option yeah. My click. phone will just pop up networks and stuff. Yeah, I mean, but like if it's hidden, hidden, like you can get on Apple and hit option Wi-Fi, and you can just you can see everything. So, um, this one is equally as important. So you secured the infrastructure. What's next? What do you got to do? You have to monitor. Oh yeah. I guess once it's secure, you got to make sure that it stays secured. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't monitor it, you're not going to know if you've got any kind of attacks, yeah. leaks, yeah. you know, memory dumps, any kind of that stuff. People sniffing around, you know. Um, are you able to detect that? Like, are you able to, if you have a good, like, security system set up, are you able to see if people are trying to, like, yeah. mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, reach your setup or whatever? The... The router I helped you set up at your house, uh-huh. I could show you where to look, and you could see the thousands of requests your house probably gets a minute. To, really? Yeah, because they're scanning for open ports on your network, and so you know I set you up with a firewall, mm-hmm. but thousands of requests a minute probably come at your house looking for an open port for either a Wi-Fi connected Keurig. A security camera, an audio but, system. T- like, are these are these requests? It's not a request, but these. It's the, called bots. It's the botnet. Okay, are these bots? Are they like something that a neighbor of mine in close proximity is doing, or is it somebody that's like no in France, Germany, across Spain. town, out of town? Yeah, whatever. Oh, wow, across the world. Really? Yeah, I can show you all that, and then I can show you like the IP addresses that try to like get into your network, and I can show you how to trace and see where it's coming from. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, modern off-the-shelf routers. You go to Best Buy, you buy a Wi-Fi router. Um, it's it's pretty well configured for the most part for consumer security. It's going to set you up with a basic firewall, but it's still going to let all your you know Apple TV video game traffic mm-hmm. go through. Um, but it will keep a log of everyone that tries to attack you. And if you actually if you dive into it, you're gonna you'll get freaked out because it's thousands a minute, thousands a minute that are scanning for open ports. They're scanning for open ports on your firewall. If you have anything port forwarded, um, so geez, dude. Well, if you if you go back to planning your infrastructure, if you plan it right, you can isolate devices on your network uh, with a virtual LAN or a VLAN to where, like, you know, if someone were to scan your network, they wouldn't see the devices on the VLAN mm-hmm. because they're on a separate network. It's just mm-hmm. a virtual network. But your typical off-the-shelf routers at Best Buy don't have, don't, yeah, yeah. They, they don't have okay. VLAN support, or if they do, it's not great. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you get into like ubiquity, ruckus, transition networks, mm-hmm. they'll have VLAN type stuff. Okay. Um, so you got, you got the infrastructure set up. Now you're monitoring it. I mean, what's that going to do if you don't respond? So you have to respond to the incidents. You have to shut the door. You have to block it. You have to move on. Otherwise, everything we talked about at this point is just null and void. Yeah. So once again, Plan, secure the infrastructure, monitor the infrastructure, respond to incidents, repair, 
So and repeat, just rinse and repeat the whole cycle. So plan, implement plan, deploy plan, check plan, and if there needs to be a change in the plan, change, yeah, make, yeah. So yeah, I mean, basically, it's plan, set it up, mm-hmm. monitor it. Mm-hmm. So plan for security, set up security, monitor security, respond to incidents. Mm-hmm. When you detect an incident, start all over from the beginning. It's an endless cycle. I can't tell you how many times, like. My wife will get so ticked at me. She'll be watching a TV show, and I'm like, hey, I got to change some settings on the router. She's like, uh, how long is that going to take? Is it because you got like a distress signal or something? Or No. Um, most of the time, it's just because like there was an update, okay. or I, I went in and changed some things, okay. um, or I wanted to watch Netflix in a different country. Yeah. Talking about that. So, you know, just little things like that. But I usually, I try to keep myself up to date. Um, if you're a windows user that they have daily updates, um, Mac OS pushes updates probably once, once or twice a month. And it, when it says critical security intelligence update, just do it. It's okay. not, it's not going to affect your apps. Just do it. Okay. I know there's, there's, there's a lot of folks out there that are anti update because they're like, every time I update my yeah, device, man. something breaks. I know those guys. I get it. I just updated my device the other day and now Salesforce doesn't work on my phone. So I'll use it on the computer. Yeah. But that means that Salesforce did not respond to their incidents. Yeah. And now their app does not work yeah. on this platform. So that's probably what, like when that, when there's disconnects like that, that's just, yeah, I guess a, a mistiming in the, the refresh or a mistiming yep. in the reprogramming or whatever it's called yeah. between well, these parties. Yeah. And really what happened, Apple updated something that uh-huh. Salesforce was talking to, and then Apple probably discovered a vulnerability or changed the patch or changed the route. Yeah. Salesforce has not adapted to that yet. Interesting. Okay. So they will need to update their end to work with Apple. So that's when you do like an operating system update yeah. and then you have to update the apps that mm-hmm. follow the operating system update because there's been some sort of like a security or graphics change somewhere yeah right yeah and yeah i'm not like i'm just talking about like step updates like security updates within an opera i'm not talking about changing to a new like upgrading your entire operating system but anything that's critical uh, critical security intelligence updates those come from the top down on apple microsoft and linux Mm -hmm. um just do them okay just do them you know um same thing with phones like just keep your phones up to date phones always run better up to date Mm -hmm. no matter which operating system you're on um so i mean those are just a few steps you can take yeah but it's important and you know like people take it for granted like a lot of people take it for granted that either you know now we have face id on apple products and, and like we we get lazy um we i mean we just get honestly Dude, I'm it's just lazy, lazy with this i'm so Here's what I'll say. I'm probably like the normal uh, consumer slash user. I feel like I might fit that demographic in that I'm definitely lazy with passwords. I'm lazy with keeping up with the stuff. And I would just much rather rely on the path of least resistance because I'm ignorant to knowing that the path of least resistance is the greatest path to getting, you know. Yeah. Uh taken advantage of or I don't really know what to call it hacked or or hacked spoofed hacked spoofed fished intruded upon intruded upon interloped upon yeah fishing is a whole other subject and that's getting more and more advanced by the day oh really yeah, oh yeah I got one the other day that I thought was 100% legit oh it's, that's because you sent me an email mm-hmm. from, and I thought it was like a, and I was like did you send this to me and you were like yeah because it just came in weird to me like the yeah. formatting or something was off. oh yeah no i mean like i was fished the other day by um a banking institution so much where, where like you know if if you load the remote the images in the thing mm-hmm. chant most of the time you can hover over like the google logo or gmail logo or whatever logo they spoofed that day and then if you hover over it it'll tell you like the path of the image what like it'll 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 tell you like you know if you hover over this it tells you down here what it's linked to. You can do that in email I too. Not. I did not. Yeah, most browsers I did not like know what that was. I've never yeah. seen that before. Yeah, so if you hover over images, it'll tell you where it's linked to. And I got one in my email the other day, and like I hovered over the image, and typically if it's 
if it's spoofed or hacked, it's like a super long, obscure web address, uh-huh. typically like on an Amazon cloud With server. Or letters something. and numbers and stuff. Yeah, a whole bunch of that. Um, but if, if you get an email from Apple, so to say, and you hover over the Apple logo, like it's an Apple domain, mm-hmm. you can see that. Well, I got one. I think this one was Gmail. And everything in the email was hosted on Google. So they're able to make the links for the images look legit. almost like, yeah, legit. Um, but so it wasn't like, legit. No, it wasn't legit. Like to the point where like, I was like, ah, oh, man, because it was like an old email address I don't use anymore. Yeah. And I thought it was breached. And like, I've got stuff, I've got like saved emails on there that, you know, per- personal information of yeah. uh, car accidents, mm-hmm. um, international vacations was on that email, like, you know, passport numbers and stuff like that. Um, that was when I went to, did the stuff for the USO. Like I had like uh-huh. a Man. rapper's social security number in that inbox. So I was freaking out. Like, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I'm um, freaking out just thinking about it, man. That's yeah. It's crazy. So all that to say, we're not, didn't want to make this video to scare anybody, frighten anybody. We just wanted to say it's important, especially in this day and age of where everything we have, everything we have, um, has a network jack. Mm-hmm. Everything is connected. Microphones, televisions, speakers, everything. Uh, and by planning your internet security, your local network, you know, all the implementations, if you, if you take care of it, you do these steps properly, you take the right things, hire the people with the accolades to do this, you will be successful. Man, if I'd you love don't, to, I hope you don't get hacked. I'd love to get, uh, I, I do have a, a friend of mine that I, I train with who that's kind of what he does. He, he's been in the cyber security space for a long time. I be, you know, I don't know if, if you guys would like, I'd be happy to ask him to see, you know, have him come on here and maybe, uh, ask him some questions or stuff, or you guys hit us with some questions that I can ask him. And I mean, that might be cool. Yeah. I definitely need to learn more about this. Clearly, uh, clearly I'm ignorant. <laughs> Oh, you know. I mean, I, I've just scratched the surface. Yeah. Like, I mean, the the stuff, like, Linux is very powerful. Yeah. And you can run that on any machine. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, well, uh, that like, that's a whole other topic. I'm going to have to bring in, like, a Linux specialist, but you can run Linux on a thumb drive now. You can have a computer on your keychain. Oh, key yeah, yeah. I've, uh, uh, my friend David has that. He's got, like three virtual machines that are all on like his little, you know, he's, mm-hmm. the, he's the guy that rolls around with like a keychain with mm-hmm. like tools on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Can, he can yeah. just pop them in. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, so like if you roll up somewhere and you've got a Linux machine on your, like how all weird it, is that? He, he has a computing machine. Oh, it is. It's a, it's a thumb drive on one end and a HDMI port on the other I end. Know. Now they're USB C on the other That's end, which crazy. has display port, but you can roll up somewhere with a shark jack and a USB thumb drive and take down someone's entire network if you know what you're doing oh, man, in scary. probably less than 10 minutes. That's scary. So all that to say, thank you again for listening to yeah. another Talking Head video. My name is Kevin. This is Trey. We're gonna, like I said, we're going to be trying to do this once a week. We're yeah. going to try to carve out Wednesdays if we're not traveling to make a video, hopefully get it out. To bring some consistent content. So please, yeah. those of you that... Because we do have some viewers, which is great. And some of these viewers have communicated with us, which is even greater. So if there's something that you'd like for us to discuss, please let us know. Yeah. I think the next episode, we'll take a break from supply chain and hacking. Mm-hmm. I really want to discuss VR Yeah, man. for the modern commercial sales platform. Because we've got some really cool stuff to talk about. Yeah. And I'm trying, I'm in the background, I'm trying to figure out how to show it. Mm-hmm. Because unless you have a headset on, it's not quite as cool, but you can definitely get the gist. So I'm going to work on that. But um, I think we definitely need to talk about VR because with everyone remote, the best way for you to experience building out a conference room mm-hmm. or hanging a line array in a church is to build it virtually, mm-hmm. step in it virtually. It is cool. And experience it virtually. It is so cool. It is cool, man. It's a it's a pretty cool little company that we've been we've been having conversations with and that's a great idea. Yeah. I'm looking we need to talk about that. that. So all that, hope you have a great week. And um 
if you like what we're doing, make sure you hit the like button. That helps us out with the YouTube algorithm, so it pumps us up the list. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the bell, you'll get little um, either push notifications on your phone or email updates every time we post a video. So uh, if we can win you over that way, let's yeah. know what we can do. I'd just like to say, as a reminder, the world's crazy right now. So just be cool to people. You know, we don't know what other people are dealing with, so just take a minute and just try to be cool to people. Yeah. Anyways, don't lo don't lose any friends over this virus. Yeah, don't it's lose not any worth friends. It. Uh, all right. See you next week. All right. See y'all.